Phenothiazine incorporated, phenanthroimidazole based organic fluorophores. So here are the content I would like to cover in my presentation. The introduction of the fluorophores and uh, their applications. And then a little bit about mechanism I will tell. And then uh, how fluorescein gets quenched in the, um, I mean upon aggregation and then how to, to improve it. And then I will show the chemical structures of the fluorophore that uh, we have synthesized. Then synthesis of the limit target compounds and uh, then at the last, I mean I will conclude my work. So here is the intro introduction part. I mean first of all I would like to introduce what is fluorophores. So any chemical compound that can re-emit light upon light excitation is called as fluorophore. So these fluorophores might be emissive both in the solution state as well as in the uh, liquid state. And there are, uh, I mean some fluorophores are there, they show selectivity. I mean uh, they might be emissive in the solution state but they will not show any emission in the, in the solution state. So this selectivity depends upon uh, how these molecules absorb, I mean, uh, utilize their excited state energy in different medium. I will explain in my later slide. And here, uh, a fraction of the electromagnetic spectrum I have shown here. Just to say that these fluorophores absorb energy in the UV region and they emit light in the visible range. And, and one more basic point I would like to include here. Like in case of fluorophores, the dissipation of excited state energy is mainly, I mean, done by the radiative channel which is represented here by green and uh, the red lines. So in case of fluorophores, the energy gap between the human and, uh, and uh, lumen energy level lies in the range of UV region. region. And when this gap decreases, then the molecule will be able to absorb <coughs> energy in the, the visible region, which is happening in the case of chromophores. Chromophores are the chemical compounds that absorb light in the visible region, and whatever the light which is not absorbed by the compound, it will get uh, reflected, and the reflected light uh, determines the color of the chromophores. While in case of fluorophores, these compounds absorb light in the UV region and they emit light in the visible range and whatever the emitted light in the, the visible region, that light will determine the, the color of the fluorophores. So here I am talking about the I mean, uh, fluorophores, so here are uh, some examples. And the magical thing with the fluorophores is that uh, in the presence of dark light, I mean in the presence of UV radiation, it is only fluorophore that starts glowing. So this makes the potential candidates to be used in a variety of biological applications like to trace some particular uh, organ within the cell or tissues. So, uh, some other examples of fluorophores include uh, as sensor for detecting a particular metal ion and in uh, security ions, in organic light emitting diodes, laser sources, bioclose, non linear optics and the other applications. So at the end here mechanical sensors are there. So in our laboratory we are also synthesizing uh, similar kind of compound which show mechanochromism and could be used in mechanical sensors. So a little bit about mechanochromism I am going to explain here. So there are several fluorophores that can change their emission color when subjected to mechanical stimuli. So this phenomenon of changing color in response to a mechanical stimulus is called as mechanochromism. For example, uh, that image, I mean, uh, one gold complex is there which was originally blue in color. So when, uh, uh, if we will uh, grind the, that compound with the help of water in a pestle, so that compound uh, change, it changes its color from blue to yellow. So this phenomenon of changing color is called as mechanochromism. Now, what kind of compound uh, show mechanochromism? One line explanation is not there, but from the reported works we can conclude that, that the molecule is, I mean, the molecule with the twisted molecular structures. The molecule with the, uh, which, whose uh, structure, I mean, based on the donor acceptor approach, in which the plane of the donor acceptor moiety should not be similar, and uh, the compound with the weak intermolecular interactions are expected to show mechanochromism. So, one such molecule our group has reported in 2018, this is the thiazole derivative. It was mechanochromically active, and uh, uh, we employed this compound as a rewritable ink. So, this is a film coated with this compound and uh, if we write uh, some letters on it by applying some mechanical pressure so uh, that area under pressure changes its color from green to yellow and these sticks after writing can be removed by filming this film uh, in the presence of vapors of uh, suitable solvents and this application I am showing here because uh, there are several uh, I mean, ready devices are there which are available on the market based on the similar concept so some screenshots from Amazon and Flipkart I am showing here uh, these are the uh, I mean, electronic writing pads on which we, if we will write something with the help of this pen or uh, with our finger so that area will start uh, glowing and uh, similar uh, one more question is there that mobile back cassette if we give some mechanical stimuli with the help of our palm and finger so that area change its color. Uh, so whatever the applications I have discussed here all these applications require this fluorophores to be in the solid state but the main problem with the conventional fluorophores is that their emission gets quenched in, in the solid state. The reason is that most of the fluorophores uh, contain some aromatic rings. So in the solid state, when the molecules are very close to each other, so there is a strong pipe cycle interaction works, which dissipates the excited state energy in a non-radioactive way. For example, I'm showing here this fluorescein fluorophore. Its solution is highly emissive, but uh, on aggregation, its emission is quenched because uh, it contains that aromatic part, 
in solid state they will come closer to each other they will open up some uh, non radiative channels for the dissipation of the thyroid state energy and therefore this compound is non massive in the solid state so this problem was addressed by tang and group in 2001 and uh, they i mean suggested that if we incorporate several non planar bodies with such load for like this tetrafenyl thiolene and hexafenyl silol hps at the bottom so if we incorporate these modules with that flow force so these are uh, helping in a, i mean in enhancing the emission in the solid state because uh, uh, they are the, these are very non planar structures so in the solid state they restrict the molecule to come close come in close contact and uh, therefore they are converting the i mean uh, they are uh, enhancing the uh, radiative or decay of the thyroid state energies so two examples are there one is for pyrimidine and the other one is for hps so pyrimidine is a very planar molecule So in solution, these are this zero, ten, twenty, thirty. It represents the percentage, different percentage of water, and zero means when uh, only organic solvent is present. So on increasing the water percentage, uh, the formation of aggregates starts to form. I mean, so at a higher water water percentage, in case of pyrimidine, when aggregates form at eighty percent and ninety percent, when all the pyrimidine converted to the aggregates, then its emission is quenched. But in case of HPS, at a lower water percentage, it was not emissive. But as the aggregate starts to form. At higher water percentage, it it starts I mean, uh, to emit. So keeping these things in mind, we have designed and synthesized six phenanthrimidazole-based organic compounds. Phenanthrimidazole we have taken here as acceptor moiety, and uh, two different donor moiety we have incorporated here. One is phenothiazine, other other one is tetrahydrothiazine. And uh, in different fashion, we have incorporated these moieties. Both the moieties are uh, contra- uh, I mean they are having contrasting donor donor abilities. And we have studied their donor electron donating ability, and by varying the position, we have studied the effect on their photophysical properties. So why I choose uh, phenanthrimidazole because it is a very rigid molecule, providing higher thermal stability to the compound. Why we choose phenothiazine because it has a bent-shaped structure. So uh, it is always I mean uh, these kind of structures inhibits the strong pi-pi sign interactions in the solid state, and we use this TPE just to enhance the emission in the aggregated in, in the solid state. I mean. So this is the synthetic system I am going to explain here for the compound. These are uh, firstly we have taken the phenothiazine and we have diluted the phenothiazine with n-propyl iodide. Uh, the base we have chosen sodium hydroxide and the reaction went in dimethyl sulfoxide for 12 hours and we obtained n-alkylated phenothiazine in 86 percent dilute. And then we did the formulation reaction by using uh, DMF and POC, POCO3 as a reagent. The reaction went for 15 hours at reflux pressure and we obtained um, mono I mean mono phenothiazine. In 68 percentile. After that, we did uh, the remaining active position of this phenothiazine. We brominated with the help of NDS, and we obtained the RPDCSO in good health. And this alkylated phenothiazine, I mean, we uh, further uh, brominated with the help of four liquid bromine. The reaction went in glycerol acetic acid and chloroform, and we obtained more bromo uh, substituted derivative of phenothiazine in 59 percentile. And then here we did uh, Miura brylation coupling reaction of the bromo derivative of phenothiazine with uh, bismuth chloride. The catalyst we used uh, PTTPFCl2. The base was potassium acetate, and we obtained PTT between in 69 percentile. Sidewise, we have synthesized this TPE uh, tetraphenylethylene by condensing this bromo derivative of diphenyl ketone with the diphenyl methane. And the base we used uh, N-butyl lithium. The reaction went at low temperature, and we obtained. Uh, I mean, in, it is a two-step reaction, and we obtained TPE VR in 63 percentile. After that, a similar method we employed uh, here. To form this bonal ester of TPE also, but solvent we I mean uh, change from carbon to one for diazine and we obtain this TPE between in uh, 70 percent. So these two intermediates PTD CSO and BR PTD CSO we uh, use to synthesize the phenanthrimidazole derivative that I'm going to show the next slide. And uh, these two intermediates we use for the synthesis of the final compounds. So these are the three intermediates that we have synthesized: PI1, PI2, and PI3. All the, I mean, the root is actually same, but the position of the bromo group is different here. So these intermediates uh, we have synthesized by condensing the re- condensation reaction of the phenanthroquinone uh, with the different NADs and uh, the different derivatives of the phenothiazine that earlier I showed. I, I have shown the synthesis, and the reaction went in the ammonium acetate, and we obtained these intermediates in um, in diols. And finally, we did through the cross coupling reaction between the phenanthroquinone derivatives uh, with the TPE given and PTZ given. The reaction condition include the potassium carbonate as a base and uh, solvent system we choose toluene ethanol water and we obtain P, um, I mean compounds one to six in I mean good yield. So these compounds are highly present in solid state. Only AI I am showing here property. 
I mean, at zero percent water fraction, these compounds are emissive. You can see the graphs here and pictures also. So as we are increasing the water percentage at higher percentage, I mean, uh, at, at 60 percent of water fraction for both the compounds, the emission increases. And after that, the formation of large size aggregates, the emission again, I mean, uh, decreasing. So this is also from my presentation. I would like to, I mean, I am concluding here. Like we have synthesized the uh, uh, six enzyme result based derivatives by interpreting phenocyanide and NTP, and, and we have studied the uh, different protein ability of these moieties on the photophysical property of these compounds. And I would like to acknowledge my senior supervisor, my PSPC members, HOD sir, director sir. So this is all of Thanks, sir. Now we will move to the question answers. So, yeah, most often carried out water. Sir, water. Yeah. Sir, actually, uh, just to solidify that base potassium carbonate we are using in organic medium. No. Yes. And sir, to convert that palladium that we are using palladium cutter is tetra one. So. No, no, you didn't answer the question. So, what happens then? Sorry, sir. What happens then? So, the base becomes soluble in water, then. Since it will. That is the only reason you use water. Sir, one more reason is there, but I don't know sir, the mechanism, I mean, uh, the category that we are using here, uh, PDP test 3 whole 4, so it is not the active catalyst. So what is the role of base? Sir, it is just activating that boron, boron, boron to ester, uh, I mean, it is making it a good living group here. Okay. Yes, sir. So simple and straightforward, I am afraid to ask any question. But you tell me that who is more electron donor, nitrogen and sulfur? Full electron donor will be sulfur. Ah, sorry, sir, nitrogen it will be. Nitrogen is more electron donor than sulfur. <laughs> sir, because the chromatic is electron. No, no, just you think and give me Who is more electron donor? Sir, electron negative. I mean, sir, sulfur we can say. Sulfur. Sir, sir. Huh. But no, you, you cannot say. Sorry, sir. No, which is more. <laughs> so, but your thermalization reaction. Yes, sir. Why is thinking nitrogen is more electron donor than the sulfur? Because I can explain it, sir. I mean, yeah, sir. And the conjugation, sir, between the nitrogen because the lone pair of nitrogen is present in the p orbital, two uh, p orbital. Go to go to. Yes, sir. Where is the formulation? Is the reaction is the proceeding at the para to the nitrogen atom? This is your question, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the lone pair of uh, nitrogen is participating more as compared to sulfur atom because it is present in two p orbital. Why? Oh. Sir, because 2p 2p orbital interaction is I mean, much good because carbon atom is also containing that pi bonds involve that p orbitals and the nitrogen the non pair of nitrogen atom also are why not in the ortho position even nitrogen is suppose you know electron donor suppose why not ortho position sir you do the aesthetic hindrance of that alkyl group but that cannot be stopped actually steady some impurities are also forming but we are no, other product also there ah sir that's why it's my it is my major product but you know that uh, Bilsmar Hopp reaction is uh, you know even generating ACL, right? Sir? ACL, hydrochloric acid. Yes, sir. Suppose if nitrogen is more basic, as you are telling, then ACL should be protonated, then it will be deactivated. Why it won't happen, sir? So this is a aromatic system, so its nitrogen atom is not, I mean, it is not free, so it is, I mean, in delocalizing state. It is not free, nitrogen, I mean, lone pair of on the nitrogen atom. It is not free. Yes, sir. So then, then, then sulfur, sulfur, if you not put then sulfur electron density will increase. Sir? <laughs> if nitrogen lone pair is conjugated with the ring, yes, sir. then sulfur lone pair will be available for that fully. Ha, sir, but ha, available. <laughs> but sir, I think orbital difference maybe it is present in uh, 3p orbitals and the hydrogen. Uh, uh, so, okay. Interaction will be less. Yeah. Okay. Does compound show any solid state present? Solid state? Yes, yes. Yes, and suppose if you remove this part, B, O, etc. That bone is sir. That's all the key part. So, how is your emission defined from the blank to the emission? Or this? I mean, blank TP is also emitted. Yeah, so what is the difference between the emission when you are conjugating this part? I mean, uh, the difference between the emission of my compound with this TP. And the TP is property is, I mean, uh, limited, but we have also calculated some, I mean, quantum yields and other values. What is your added by adding this DO? Why did you add it? 
Okay, actually, sir, we need to couple this tetrafenothylene with the phenothylene. So, we need to make some precursors. So, here I have added a more ester just to form a precursor. And then, here in the next slide, sorry, here you can see the uh, TP is there, not more ester. And then, we did the cross coupling reaction between these two groups. So what is the molecular basis? This is home molecular. Sir, the molecule should be having twisted because whenever we are applying the linear pressure, so that twisted structure gets converted to the planar structure. So enhancing the conjugation and therefore the emission will be shifting to the higher level of some time. That can happen by using chemical force. Ah, yes sir. Sir, I mean, uh, this is the main criteria. But your thanaphine can also convert to non-thanaphine? Sometimes, because in which uh, some, uh, in, I mean, uh, a strong intermolecular force are here, which is, stabilizes the molecules in planar form, in the, in the crystal. Mm -hmm. And when we apply some electrical force, so that interaction is dis uh, disrupted, mm -hmm. and the molecule again adopt mm -hmm. twist. Mm -hmm. Sir, by simply grinding or scratching with the help of a spatula in a mortar and a pistol, like that only. Thank you, Mr. Sanjay, for providing